All right, I hope that went well for you. Now we're into the last layer. Now, when I do the final layer of microfill, I like to do one layer that goes from cervical to incisal, mesial to distal. I find if I can do that, instead of adding layer onto layer, it's much easier when I get to the contouring and polishing. Because I find with microfills and with nanofills, if you try to add layer onto layer, there's a seam that can be very difficult to eliminate. And if you don't eliminate that seam, that's where you're going to get staining with your final, final composites. So what I like to do is take one final layer that's going to go over everything. Now, working with the compules, if I just inject the material over top of the tooth where I'm trying to build this sort of final veneer, there's going to be all these little wrinkles. We noticed that when we were building up that nanofill into that palatal wall, it was hard to get that nice and smooth. So what I do instead is I'm going to take this compule of composite, the microfill A1, and I'm going to inject it onto a pad. So watch me here. Again, I'm going to put on my yellow shield. This is my microfill A1. I'm going to take off the tip of the microfill, sort of this pre-oxygenated area. And then I'm going to inject onto the pad the entire compule. All right. Now I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to take an alcohol gauze. I'm going to clean my glove finger. I'm going to take an instrument, lift off the composite that I just squirted on, and then I'm going to use my clean glove finger to roll it into a ball. By rolling it into a ball, I'm eliminating all those seams. It's going to be one homogeneous material. So then I don't have to worry about these wrinkles getting into the composite. It's all being eliminated as I roll the composite. Now then I'll take a firm instrument. This is sort of like a classic plastic instrument. This is the, this is the 8A instrument, the 8AL, 8A long from Cosmonet. It's a nice firm instrument. And I'll pick up that ball of composite. And I'm going to bring it onto the tooth. I'm going to center it right in the middle, like that. Then I can use this firm instrument, this 8A. I'm going to start blending the composite to adapt onto our tooth form. Now I like to blend it cervically first and then incisally and work it from cervical to incisal and then gently start moving the composite towards the distal and to the mesial. But I don't worry about the distal mesial walls yet. I'm just working about the incisal and the gingival contour. Once I have that cervical and incisal contour and have it adapted to the tooth, then I can start working on the proximals. To work on the proximals, though, I need to use a thinner instrument. So this is where I'm going to go back to that IPC instrument, that super thin instrument. First, working on the mesial. I'm going to blend the composite. And you can see with this IPC, I can literally tuck the composite right into that gingival embrasure and that gingival facial embrasure and then I can use this IPC to open up that facial embrasure and open up the incisal. And the key is just keep your instrument clean with alcohol gauze. Coming back around to make sure that I'm still sealed at the cervical. And then I'll start working towards the distal. I'll use this IPC to cleave off or cut off any excess.
Again, using this IPC to open up the gingival embrasure and the facial embrasure as I go to the incisal embrasure here. There may be times when I need to use an explorer. to both help open up the gingival embrasure and then on the palatal to make sure we remove the excess. Continuing on, I'm going to be moving the composite towards the incisal so I can be able to cut it off. So I'm starting now to start thinking about my line angles now that I've sealed off into the proximal contacts. I'm pulling the composite towards the incisal using this IPC instrument to cleave off the excess. around the tooth. Now the tooth is still oversized. I need to thin it out some more. It's bulky from the facial. You can see it really on the mesial in there. So we got to really work to pull in that line angle. And as I do that, you can see that automatically the tooth starts to shrink in appearance. Just dragging it towards the incisal where I can cleave it off. Again, come back around. Come in on the mesial now. He is really defining those line angles and then opening up as you go into those facial embrasures, just as we talked about with the illustrations of the shape of the lateral incisor. Now we're getting much better contour. A little overbuilt is fine, so that I have room to go back and contour and shape and then polish. So a little bit of over contour is, is preferred, so I have that room. Let's see what it looks like with the white light. All right, just a little bit oversized. I want to make sure that's sealed. I'm going to go around again with my IPC to make sure that it's sealed. You'll notice with the microfill composite, it's a little darker until it gets cured. Once it gets cured, the microfills actually get a little bit lighter. So when I look at this, I'm, I could be questioning, did I pick out the right shade? It's maybe a half shade too dark, but as I cure it and polish, it's going to get lighter. All right. This takes me the most time of any part of the procedure. So take your time, get this final layer so it's shaped and contoured, get it all blended in, cure it, and my final cure will be for 60 seconds with a traditional halogen light, 30 seconds with an LED, with a high intensity LED light. But make sure that your light is covering the entire tooth. You may need to cure from different angles to make sure that you cure entirely. I'll be curing both the palatal and the facial to make sure my composite's completely cured. Have fun, I'll see you at the next section.